video, we're going to talk about the metric system and a couple of basic calculations dealing with the metric system. First of all, in the metric system, we use a few different units than what we might normally be used to in our everyday lives. For mass, we use grams. You've maybe heard somebody that they weigh such and such pounds. Uh, we don't use pounds in the metric system. We're using grams for mass. In temperature, we use degrees Celsius. So instead of saying that something f is freezing at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, in Celsius, it's zero degrees Celsius. For volume, we have liters instead of gallons or quarts. Energy, energy is joules. Distance is meters rather than an inch or a foot or a mile. We don't use any of those. For distance, we use a meter. Time is second, standard stuff that we're used to. And then a force is a newton. Any and all of these units are fair game for your quiz. So I may ask you, what's the unit for measuring energy? And you would say joule. Or liter is a measurement for, is a unit of measurement for what? And then you would say volume, whatever the case may be. The metric system is a base 10 system. So whatever the base unit is, so that could be a gram or a liter or a meter or a joule or whatever. It's a base 10 unit. So 10 to the f zero power, just like anything, is one. And then it gets bigger or smaller from there. Here's what I mean. So when we go to 10 to the first power, or deca, okay, so 10 to the one, that would just be 10. And the notation for that is dA. So if we wanted a decagram, one decagram, there would be 10 grams in one decagram. So let's go to the next one, 10 to the second power, where we have hecto. So hecto is 10 to the second, so 10 and two zeros. The shorthand is H. So if we had one hectoliter, if we change the base units, now there would be 100 liters in one hectoliter. Okay, so here's our next one is kilo, 10 to the third power, where our notation is lowercase k. That would be 1,000, 10 to the third. So in one kilogram, there would be 1,000 grams. So let's go the other way with everything. So let's go deci. Deci, where we would have just a lowercase d, that would be 0 0.1. All we did is move the decimal place to the right one spot. Okay, so um, next we would have centi. And in centi, that's just a lowercase c, so that would be 0 0.01. And milli. Milli is a lowercase m, so that would be 0 0.001. So we could have a centimeter, or a milliliter, or a decigram. For our quiz, we're going to have to know a couple of others. The first one is mega. So we can have, I'm sure maybe on your computer you've heard of a megabyte. Well, mega is 10 to the sixth. So that's six zeros. And I know we don't need to know what bytes, but basically a megabyte would be one million bytes. So uh, the, the shorthand or the notation for that is a capital M. Last one I talk about is on the other side, micro. Sometimes in a lab that we'll do, it's micro liters we might use from time to time. So that's 10 to the negative sixth. So that's a 0 0.12345. That's a long ways away. And the notation for this is a little bit different. Uh, it's actually a lowercase mu, and it kind of looks like a funky U or a funky M or something like that. But there's the notation for micro. So what I'd like to do now is just go over a couple of conversion questions that I might ask you on the quiz. So let's say that we have 
uh, centimeters, let's say. And I might ask you on a question, how many hectoliters, or sorry, hectometers are there in five centimeters? Well, first thing that we have to do is we have to write down what we know. What is the given information? So we already have that, 5.6 centimeters, and we want to get to hectometers. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a little multiplication problem. And it's going to be a fraction. I know that we love fractions. And in order to get everything canceled out, we don't want centimeters in our answer. So we're going to put centimeters on the bottom. And remember, our final answer wants to be hectometers, so we're going to put hectometers on top. Notice I haven't put any numbers on here in any way, shape, or form. So right now, just double check to make sure that your units cancel out. So we got centimeters on the top here, those cancel with those centimeters on the bottom. So the only units that left would be hectometers, which is what we want. Now, here's a little trick, and there's lots of different ways, because people don't like dealing with all these decimal places all the time. So what I always do is, if we see hectometer is bigger than a centi meter. So what I always do is whatever is biggest, I put a one. Okay. So a hectometer is bigger than a centimeter. So I put the hectometer as one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to count. So if we start here, this is where we started. And then we're going to move over one, two, three, four places to it. So I know that I have to have one, two, three, four zeros in my conversion factor. So we're saying that there's 10,000 centimeters and one hectometer. And then from here, it's just a simple matter of doing the math. So 5.6 times one is still 5.6. Remember there's an imaginary one here, so one times 10,000 is still 10,000. So all of this, and we would get our final answer of 0 0.00056 hectometers. And again, because it's a base 10 system, all we're really doing is moving the decimal place. If you see here, we have one, two, three, four zeros. Huh, how many pot spots did we move the decimal place over? Well. We had 5.6, we had 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's a 0, there's a 0, there's a 0, and a 0 before. Wow. There's our answer. Pretty simple, all because, again, it's a base 10 system. Let's do one more example. Let's take 11.5 kilograms. And let's say we want to know how many decigrams are in 11.5 kilograms. So again, we start with our given information. Then we have to figure out our conversion factor. We know that we want to get rid of kilograms, so we're going to put that on the bottom because it's on top here. And we want our final answer in decigrams, so we're going to put decigrams there. And we know we want our final answer in decigrams. So we need to get from this spot here to this spot here. And remember, what I do is I always make sure and put whatever's the biggest unit, so in this case kilo, as the one. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how many spots that is over. So there's one, two, three, four. So I know that must be one, two, three, four. So again, I have 10,000. Now, since I'm multiplying, all I have to do is move my decimal place to the right. So if I had just off to the side here, 11.5, I need to move my decimal place four places because I have four zeros. So one, two, three, four. Fill it in with zeros. So I have 11, 5, and 3 zeros. So that would mean I would have 
115,000 decigrams is equal to 11.5 kilograms. If you can do those two basic questions, you're going to get all those questions right on the quiz. Now for the last question, it's going to be a math problem doing something with more than one unit. So for example, I might give you, um, or sorry, we know that one centimeter cubed, right, a cube, okay, a cube, so a centimeter, centimeter, and a centimeter, is equal to one milliliter. We also know that one gram of water is equal to one milliliter of water, or actually what I should say to make that more accurate is one milliliter of water has a mass of one gram. So let's take that into consideration. Let's do one at a time. So let's have a cube. Excuse me, not the greatest here. And uh, let's say that it measures two centimeters by uh, one centimeter by, uh, and let's say that it's really long and I didn't do the greatest job drawing it here. Let's say that's three centimeters. Okay, and maybe I might ask you how many centiliters will fit inside of this cube. Okay, so here's what we're going to do first. We've got to give our given information. So that's two centimeters by one centimeter times three centimeters. Okay, we know that. And then here we're going to use our conversion factor. And if you notice, centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, all that's on the top. So we're going to put our centimeters cubed on the bottom. And then our conversion factor here, so we have one milliliter on top. One to one. That's what our formula is going to say. And I'll give you that formula. But milliliters isn't our final answer. Remember, we said we wanted our final answer in centiliters. So we need one more conversion factor. Okay, we got to put milliliters on the bottom so it'll cancel, and centiliters on top. So what's bigger, a centiliter or a milliliter? Well, remember we have our base, deci, centi, milli, and then way out here we had our micro, and then this way we had our deca, hecto, kilo, and then way out here we had our mega. Here's our base. So let's see. We know that centi is bigger than milli because it's in the 10 to the minus 2 spot, whereas milli is in the 10 to the minus 3 spot. So we know that that's bigger, so there's going to be our 1. So we need to go from here to here. So that's just one spot, so that's 1, 0. So we know that there's 10 milliliters and 1 centiliter. And from here, now it's as easy as, as doing the math. So, because this centimeter cubed, right, centimeter three times, would cancel out with those centimeters, so those cancel. This milliliters here canceled with those milliliters, so our answer would be left in centiliters, which is what we want. So then all we got to do is two times one is two, times three is six. So we would have six over ten which would be equal to 0 0.6 centiliters. So let's do one more using the other formula. Let's say that I, in a given question, I say that you have 27 kiloliters of water. And what I want you to do is, is say, how, what is the mass of 27 kiloliters of water in decagrams? I'm going to set it up the same way. What do we know? So we know we have 27 kiloliters of water. And we know that one milliliter is equal to one gram. Well, this is milliliters, so we can't use that yet. So what we got to do is we got to convert kiloliters to milliliters first. So kiloliters is going to go on the bottom. Milliliters is going to go on top. A kiloliter is bigger than a milliliter. And, okay, so here's our base, deca, centi, milli, 
sorry, Desi. Here's Deca. Here's Hecto, and here's Kilo. Here's our base. So we're going from all the way here to all the way here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six spots. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. Okay, so now we're in milliliters, so we're off to the races. And milliliters to grams is our conversion factor that we have that we're going to use. So milliliters on bottom, grams on top, and remember that's one to one just like it says it is. But our final answer needs to be in decagrams. So we're not there yet because right now we have grams. So grams goes on bottom, decagrams goes on top. As we see, decagrams is bigger, so that's the one. How many decagrams in a, in a gram, or how many grams in a decagram? Well, here's decagrams to our base. That's only one. So that's 10. That's just 10. There's 10 grams in a decagram. So what we would be left with before we add and, or divide or anything like that, just multiplying everything across. Oh, we got to check our units. So kiloliters, cancel. Milliliters, cancel. Grams cancel, so we're left with decagrams. We'd have, let's see, that'd be 27 million going across the top and 10 on the bottom, which would give us our final answer. Those would cancel out. 2 million, whoopsies, 2 million 700,000 decagrams would be how much 27 kiloliters of water weighs. If you got all that information, you're going to be just fine for our quiz. So that is all she wrote. It's like this and like that and like this, Anna. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this. So just chill to the next episode.